All right, so we uh, just got to this place called Neon Lake. It's in the Cooking Lake uh, Provincial uh, Recreational Area here in Alberta. And uh, you can see there's a nice uh, little trail uh, cabin to, to eat lunch in. And what we're gonna do right now is go grab some fuel for my hobo stove. And what you're looking for is dead wood, obviously, uh, and small stuff. So we're gonna take a look here. We're getting jerked around here by the dog. Whoop, whoop. There we go. Okay, there's Gracie. Okay, so when you're grabbing dead wood, you wanna make sure that it just snaps right off. Okay, so nice stuff like this. Just snaps off nice and easy. Okay, uh, you don't want to take anything that's on the ground because that means it'll be wet. Okay. Get ran over by some bikes here. Come on. Oh, the dog's pulling me around here. Right, so you don't want anything that's wet. Um, and how would you know, because now it's starting to turn uh, fall, as you can see here. Right, well how do you know what's uh, dead and what's alive? Well, a good way to do it, obviously, is to try to pull that off. And you can hear that that didn't snap at all, so that's no good. So let's talk about the hobo stove. As you can see, it's just a tin can. Um, nothing spectacular. Uh, my pot set fits in nicely inside it, and I'll go through that in a second. Okay, I have three metal, they have to be metal, not aluminum, stakes. Uh, and here it is. So it's just a, a Kirkland coffee can, you know, from uh, Costco. Uh, you've got an opening there. Uh, it's not. Uh, I didn't really measure it out or anything, I just thought, you know what, that's a good size for it. Uh, and then the holes that I made, I used uh, my largest drill bit. I, again, I didn't size that out to be anything special. So there really isn't any rhyme or reason to it, and I, and I think that's kind of probably the way it was made originally. Um, for me to get my pot set inside, I needed to actually take the, uh, the coffee can and turn it over. You can see there's the bottom piece of it there and uh, I just use that uh, as the base of the stove there so it makes it nice and easy. So the three pins, the three pins we just stick those inside like so. Originally I made uh, the holes higher um, but um, after having it pointed out to me <laughs> that uh, maybe you could put them lower and your pot set would sit inside, uh, maybe that was a good way to do business. So that's what I ended up doing. All right. So that way the pot just sits inside nicely like that. Okay, when you get uh, your wood, I've got a lot of wood here. Uh, I've got some little, uh, you know, tinder-like size stuff, pencil width, uh, lead width, smaller, and then some uh, as big as maybe my thumb. And that's when you're uh, when you're starting a fire. You'd normally uh, you would have those two sizes plus a bit bigger once you got the fire going a bit bit more. Uh, big thing here is to make sure that they're not uh, broken that big. You don't need them to be big to fit in your stove. In fact, you don't want them to be. So it's a good thing to break all of them beforehand. And if you have more than you need, well, great. And if you don't have enough, then go over to the, the trees over there and grab some more, you know, before the, the beavers or the dog get to them. Okay, so the next thing here, obviously, is to light it up. So I put my, uh, my tinder sticks in there, and then, uh, as you can see down here in the bottom, I've got birch bark. When you have birch bark, you pretty much don't need to even think. It's, uh, such a great fire starter, so much oil in it that it uh, just lights right up. So uh, I'll get this going. Good thing to, to note before you, you start your fire is to make sure you have everything ready to go so uh, you're not wasting your, your wood. So we'll get this going here and then uh, we'll check back here in a second. It won't take long. Okay, so here we go. We've got it uh, started up here. 
and uh, you see it is now 11.49 so we'll see how long it takes to get that water boiling it shouldn't take that long I think I've done it in less than 10 minutes before so again uh, with it sitting down there it soaks up a lot of heat uh, that smoke is pretty much from uh, all that birch bark I stuffed in there. Uh, it burns a little black, but whatever. It burns nice and hot and is guaranteed almost every time, even when wet. So it's too bad you didn't have that out on the uh, on the island, but at least you'll have uh, that reindeer uh, fungus or reindeer moss that you uh, told me about. And that would start this stuff just as well. All right, so it is now 54 after, so it's been five minutes. Let's take a look here. There we go. We've got uh, water boiling. You know, not rolling boil, but it's starting to boil enough that I can start doing my, my noodles up there. That was just the, the pan. But uh, there you go, five minutes. And that's a liter of water, by the way. So, so that's a pretty good uh, test, and it's also... Uh, I don't know, I think it's about five degrees out today, so it's not the uh, coldest out, but it's definitely not uh, 28 degrees or, or something else. But you can see that that stove is doing exactly what it should be doing. And it didn't cost me anything but a can of coffee, which I drank and really enjoyed. So there it is, it's that simple. We'll, uh, I'll show you uh, what it looks like here when we're all done. Well, when I'm eating, that is. All right, so we're uh, gonna have some lunch. I just wanted to say that if I had a dollar for every time I forgot a spoon or a fork or whatever whenever I went out to to uh, eat, I'd probably be able to buy a case of beer. So again, I had to quickly, you know, try to carve a fork because I'm having noodles, um, so so I could have something to eat with. Um, annoying, but at the same time, you know. I get a little fork out of the deal and uh, and whatever. Luckily, my, my lunch is still hot. Um, the stove, around the same time, is uh, out. So yeah, I'll show you that. So you can see, there it is. There's uh, what's left, some white ash, <clears throat> meaning it, it's burned pretty efficient. And there's the big pile of wood left. And, uh, and there's my lunch. So, all in all, pretty good... Uh, Pretty good little experiment, uh, pretty good little show. Uh, if you have any questions, then email me, let me know, and I'll uh, get back to you with uh, whatever answers I can. But uh, really, it's not much slower than a traditional stove, or not a traditional stove, a white gas stove, or a, you know, a propane stove of some kind. And the beauty of it is, is that it's all the dead, you know, wood around the trees here, and uh, it's not that hard to find. Um, Winter time might be a little harder to find some stuff, but I don't I don't think so really. And uh, where you are out in the west coast, well, that might be uh, a little you know harder to find some dry stuff. But you know you get underneath those great big trees, and uh, I'm sure there's lots of dry stuff there. And the beauty of this stove is that it actually will work with wood that's not even 100% dry because it does burn pretty hot. So uh, again, any questions, just let me know. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, and uh, hopefully uh, yours works as good as mine. Have a good one. Cheers. The beaver around here have been eating like crazy. So I just ate lunch over there. You can see the shack. Uh, and I literally almost had knocked this guy off this tree here. He was bringing over lunch. But uh, they are just, just, you know, eating like crazy here. Getting ready for winter or something, I would guess. But a quick talk here because I can see them and I want to point them out. You can see up here, uh, you see all these uh, dead trees. We call these widow makers. So the reason they're, they're uh, widow makers, there's a couple of great big ones back there, um, is because in the middle of the night you'll uh, set up your camp, you'll you know have your tent up and everything else. Windstorm comes by, next thing you know, wham, down comes the widow maker. So look for those when you're setting up your camp because the last thing you want to do is not come home from a big tree falling on your head. All right.
So a good hike altogether. Uh, about 8.2 kilometers, and I only had about three hours to do it in. So that was good, including an hour for lunch or so, and making the video for lunch. So it turned out pretty good. Uh, really like this park. Great little park. Not a lot of people come here. Uh, they all go to Elk Island, and uh, that's fine. You know, but when I'm bringing the dog, who's tired now. Um, I don't like to be where I know there's great big animals and seeing as though I know there's buffalo in Elk Island uh, and elk and, and moose and everything else. There's elk and moose here too, but less to worry about uh, in case she does something, you know, that's not cool with a buffalo. I don't want to be the one taking the brunt of it. So anyways, good hike after all. Uh, three hours, uh, less than three hours actually did it and, you know, two hours and something, which is no big deal. There was no mountains or hills or anything. and. And uh, we just, you know, took our time and, and looked at uh, the ducks and the waterfowl and stuff. So, um, again, uh, hopefully uh, the the, uh, the stove works out for you. Hopefully everything else uh, works out for you and you keep enjoying, you know, enjoying the woods out there. Because you got uh, the best place in Canada as far as I'm concerned. I can't wait to get back there. So, have a good one. Talk to you later. Cheers. Bye.